Hello everyone, this is CJ with Cycletron. Today I'd like to talk about motorcycle safety equipment. The kind that comes when you buy a new motorcycle from the factory. Now we're seeing more and more safety equipment show up on new motorcycles. Um, a lot of motorcycle buyers aren't asking for these features. Some of them may be nice, some of them may be considered necessary, but, but the fact is a lot of this equipment is showing up on new motorcycles because of regulations in, say, Europe, uh, mandating not only emission standards, but uh, certain safety standards like anti-lock braking on new motorcycles. That affects the manufacturers. They could decide to make multiple types of bikes for, for different markets, or they could make a, a standard model that they could sell everywhere. So we're seeing, for example, anti-lock braking showing up uh, as standard on new motorcycles here in the United States. Uh, possible exception are some sport bikes where there's still high demand for non-ABS models uh, for people that like to do some stunt riding. Uh, usually bikes that have ABS, you're not allowed to switch that off. It's, it's not, you're not able to do it. Sometimes you can get a bike with traction control and it, it may be hard to get, uh, switch off. So what I wanted to explore is what's driving these new features, these new safety features on motorcycles, is it beneficial? And uh, where is this ultimately headed? You know, Ducati came out with their new V4 Multistrada, and one of the features of this new bike is adaptive cruise control. Now, I've only had a couple of bikes with cruise control on it. It's nice, especially for long rides. I, I don't even use adaptive cruise control on my vehicles. I mean, if, if I'm in heavy enough traffic where I can't have cruise control, I just turn it off. Or, or, or deactivated by hitting the brakes uh, briefly. So I, I guess I don't really understand the need for adaptive cruise control, but, but particularly on a motorcycle, but yet there it is. Um, I had a 2016 Ducati Multistrada. I really liked that bike, had a lot, a lot of nice features. Uh, on the display, you could toggle a switch to display ambient air temperature, which was nice. It's, it's, I kind of like knowing the time and temperature. Uh, not obsessively, but I, I tend to track the, that information throughout the day. But on the Ducati, uh, you know, I, I ride year round, and if the ambient air temperature were at 39 degrees Fahrenheit or lower, there would be a big yellow warning light on the display saying uh, that, you know, give me an ice warning. Uh, you know, I don't need that. Uh, I know if it's cold, I'm gonna look out for ice and be careful. Uh, the fact that there's a display uh, indicator telling me there may be ice, it was of no benefit to me at all. It just makes me wonder, is Ducati selling a Multistrada in a particular jurisdiction that requires such a warning? I, I couldn't tell you. If anyone knows out there, please let me know in the comments. Uh, another thing that's showing up on motorcycles uh, are adaptive LED headlights. Uh, I personally like LED headlights. I actually need them. Uh, my nighttime vision isn't so great. I don't know that I need adaptive uh, lighting. I, I tend to slow down quite a bit at night anyway. So again, it's a nice feature. Sh uh, you know, something that could be an option now might be required down the road. That's, that's the slippery slope on some of this stuff. Uh, analog braking, uh, I think it's a particular benefit to beginning riders. But I, even there, I had one of my teenage sons learn on a 1982 750 Virago. And I had him go to a school parking lot and practice threshold braking, basically stopping as, as quickly as you can without causing a skid. That's, that's an important skill to have. Now, if you start out with an anti-lock brake bike or you just have one at some point, uh, does that cause you to uh, not be as proficient on threshold braking? It, it, it does it make somebody inclined just to mash the brakes and let the computer modulate the braking force to avoid the skid? Uh, some other things that are coming out on bikes are uh, stability control, like wheelie control and, and rear wheel lift or stoppy control. Uh, you have cornering ABS. You know, what, what do you have in common with a lot of these things is that you've got multiple onboard computers that are controlling these things. And it's inevitably raising the price of new motorcycles. Uh, but is it worth it? Is it, is it actually beneficial? You know, uh, a lot of this safety equipment's been trickling down from the automotive uh, industry. You know, I can remember a time when my parents would buy a vehicle and, and seat belts were still optional. Uh, 
now, now they're required, uh, obviously. A uh, funny thing happened with, uh, with airbags. A lot of people, when they got airbag equipped cars or trucks, would uh, stop wearing their seatbelt. Uh, you know, there's a lot more safety equipment showing up, lane departure, blind spot warning. You even have uh, automatic braking to avoid a collision on certain vehicles if, if you enable that feature. Uh, you would think that such safety features would lead to lower insurance premiums, but that hasn't been the case. Um, the only thing that's led to lower insurance premiums in recent times is, is the rebate that a lot of people are getting or the lowering of rates just because people haven't been driving as much in 2020. But as far as the safety features go, uh, that hasn't led to a price increase because, or price decrease uh, rather, because if anything, people are getting in more accidents than before. And it's not just due to distracted driving. Apparently there's a phenomenon where people have all the safety equipment and they drive in a less careful manner, uh, thinking that these passive systems, uh, in some cases not so passive, will engage and, and spare them uh, from otherwise uh, having to drive in a more careful fashion. You know, uh, there's Honda Goldwings that have uh, in-dash airbags. Uh, Honda offers some dual clutch uh, models. That, that might be a nice feature for uh, certain beginning riders, but again, you're, you're trading off a lot of uh, capability or, or feel for a bike for, cert for certain features that may be done in the, in the, with the notion of providing greater safety. Uh, I mean, here's, here's a 2005 YZF, a Yamaha YZF 600R. And I love this bike. Uh, I bought it to restore from a co-part auction and then decided to keep it because it was such a fun bike to ride, but it doesn't have any lock brakes, doesn't have traction control, uh, doesn't have a lot of things that a modern bike would have. However, it does have some good inherent safety features. I mean, it handles very well, it's got great acceleration, and it's got phenomenal braking. So all these are inherent safety features that can cause somebody to get in real trouble if, if they're if they're careless or inexperienced. So are these safety features being used to sell us more and more powerful motorcycles, more expensive motorcycles that maybe users shouldn't be getting on? You know, some of these uh, motorcycles now have, uh, with, with, fly, uh, with the ride by wire uh, throttle, you can uh, get different uh, program modes or power modes set up, like a rain mode or a low power mode are these types of things enticing beginning buyers or inexperienced buyers to get a more powerful motorcycle than they otherwise would? I mean, I came up through the ranks of small displacement twin motorcycles till I worked up into four cylinder bikes. I know in Europe they have a, a graduated motorcycle licensing requirement. We don't have that here in the States, uh, except for just, just time in the saddle. Where I live, a 14 year old can get a learner's permit for a motorcycle if they also have their vehicle, uh, their, their car learner's permit, and they, they can ride with a parent on the, uh, who's riding their motorcycle and basically shadow them for a year, and then they can get a restricted license where they can go to school, church, or work on their own, and then as early as 16, they can get uh, an unrestricted license. That's it. You know, if a parent uh, wasn't aware or wasn't as diligent, you know, they could put their kid on a on a ZX 1400 Ninja. Uh, I wouldn't do that, but it, it's possible here. So again, a lot of this goes back to choice. Um, a lot of these features that seem optional or might be beneficial end up becoming mandatory in, a, in, a, uh, in an inevitable sort of way uh, down the road. So my question for you all out there is this, are these features a good thing? Uh, are they actually enhancing safety? Um, you know, the fact is, in, in the United States in particular, our roadways are not optimized for anything but passenger cars, trucks, and commercial vehicles. They're not optimized for motorcycles, pedestrians, or bicyclists. Uh, I live in a part of town that's experienced urban sprawl. The 1200 person high school that my uh, oldest son graduated from a few years ago as a senior prank, I mean, they've got these two lane roads going into the, the school uh, basically, the roads haven't caught up with all the other housing and, and school development that's occurred. So 
as a senior prank, he and a few buddies rode their bicycles to school. Well, there's no shoulder, there's no sidewalk, they had to ride in the roadway, and it gridlocked the traffic such that school started a half hour late that day. That was their senior uh, prank, and it, it made a point. Um, I don't think he was thinking about all these implications, but he knew what would happen if, if just by simply riding his bicycle, which he's legally allowed to do. So now we've got autonomous vehicles uh, coming down the pike here, so, so, so to speak. Um, I understand that a lot of the self-driving software wasn't optimized for pedestrians or motorcyclists or bicyclists either. So a new technology that's coming up is some type of radio technology where your motorcycle would communicate with other vehicles on the road to let them know you're there. It might be a way around uh, the cars having to have the technology to recognize you as a motorcyclist. Um, you know, that's again a slippery slope. What happens if your motorcycle doesn't have that technology in 20 years, even as an add-on? Does that mean you can't ride on the roads anymore? So, uh, you know, another technology that might be good is, is like a one uh, OnStar type uh, technology where if you get in an accident or, or there's some type of emergency, uh, the, you'll, your motorcycle will call 911 for you. You know, back in the 90s, uh, early 90s, I was riding a sport bike in Montana and the national speed limit was still 55 miles an hour. And I'm not sure exactly uh, how Montana avoided having to knuckle under the national speed limit, but their posted speed limit was as high as 75 miles an hour back then. And it was widely known that they didn't even enforce that. I mean, you'd have to be going like 130 miles an hour before you'd get a ticket in Montana. And I thought, man, this is great. I got a sport back. I got these beautiful twisty two lane roads. I could go as fast as I want. And, and I didn't. And in part, uh, I came to realize that I could go two or three hours before I saw another motorist on the roadway, either behind me or, or passing the other way. And that really tempered my desire to go like crazy on a public road. Because if I had gotten off on the shoulder or had some other emergency, uh, it might be a long time before somebody come along to maybe offer assistance. So again, how do you feel about this new, new technology? It does seem to be rather inevitable. Uh, do you think it's a good thing? Do you wish you just had a choice that uh, you could option out a lot of this, these safety features? It seems to be as, as motorcycle buyers, we're getting uh, more models to choose from, but less choice when it comes to the features on an individual model for, for whatever reason. So again, uh, look forward to more videos in 2021. Everyone ride safe. Uh, please like and subscribe if you haven't done so already and uh, I'll be posting more videos soon. Thanks very much.